everyone. Today I thought you might like to watch me start a portrait of my niece Belle. I also thought I'd show you my desk. This painting is larger than what I usually do for YouTube and I've taped it to my board here and you can see my supplies. My reference photo is on my laptop and I use it to zoom in and out. I have three main lights that I use for videos and one that just sits around looking cute. I attach my iPhone to that black lamp and it hovers over my painting. And there's my palette and water. I've already done a light pencil drawing. I'm going to paint Belle's face first, so I'm covering other parts with pieces of watercolor paper to protect them from any splashes. And I'm ready to paint. First I'll put masking fluid on places I want to stay white, including the sparkles in her eyes, the tip of her nose, and some highlights in her hair. I'm also putting a line of it along her hand and the breadstick she's eating. I'm going to use a lot of water on her face and this will create a little dam that will protect her fingers. Now I'm mixing a few main colors for her face, a basic skin tone, gold, and pink. Belle's obviously very young and her skin is perfectly smooth, so I'm wetting down her entire face with water, except for her eyes. This will help my colors blend together without any streaks that might look like wrinkles. Every color I drop on here will fade a bit as it dries. I'm adding some golden brown shadows around her hairline, some orange to her nose, and even some bluish gray near her eyes and cheek while the face is still wet. Then I'm going to walk away and let this dry for about 30 minutes. And I'm back and the paper is drier and the colors have calmed down. Now I'm painting my favorite part of this portrait, Belle's enormous dark brown eyes. The lighting here is such that the whites of her eyes are almost turquoise, so that's a lot of fun. The turquoise is dried and now it's time for her irises. A few dots of masking fluid from earlier will become sparkles. Then I'm going over them again with a mixture of cobalt blue and sepia where her eyes are the darkest. The whites of her eyes are so blue right now, but they're nowhere near blue enough. I'll go over them again a few more times. Moving on, I'm adding some soft shadows around her eyes. These are very watery and beige, and I'm using a number one round brush to lay them in. Low Cornel has stopped making the number ones that I've used for years, so I've been trying to find a new brand that I think will work for me. This is by Utrecht, and I really like it. I'm picky about the bristle length and springiness, and this is the fourth brand I've tried. Belle has been blessed, or is it cursed, with the Eddington brow. I think her eyebrows are adorable and very expressive, and they first started to become noticeable when she was just a couple of months old. I don't want to make them too dark here, so I've used that same beige color as underpainting. She also has legitimate Betty Davis eyes, and she gets that from her father's side of the family. You can see a prominent crease between her eyebrows and lash line, and I've painted that a purplish brown. I've also given her brows a second layer that's a little darker. Baby eyes are different from adult eyes. The corners are particularly tight, and they will change a lot as she ages. I'm sorry my hair keeps getting in the way. My lighting situation works great for YouTube, but sometimes it creates a glare for me. Normally the lamp on my right side is a little bit closer to me. I'm pretty happy with her eyelids, so now I can work on her lashes. She has long eyelashes, but I don't want them to look fake or pageanty. So I'm going over the lash line with very dark brown and pulling out just a few. Is there anything cuter than a baby's nose? Belle's nose is a peachy color. I've defined the nostrils and the curves on each side with orangey browns and filled in the medium values. I've dropped in some very watery, cool tones under her nose, and then I did another layer of more intense oranges. I had some lunch, and when I came back, I felt her eyes weren't blue enough. Then I started working on some more of the shadows. The story behind this painting isn't that amazing. My parents, my sister Em, and Tyler and Belle, and Jeff and I went to a winery for supper about a year ago. Belle was around 18 months old and she was in a high chair at the end of the table. She had been to this place before and was excited because they were going to have live music there and Belle likes to dance. 
So here she is waiting for the music to happen and watching her parents and the rest of us. And M gave her some breadsticks to chew on. And I thought she just looked so thoughtful and kind of pensive as she sat there quietly taking everything in. I think I'm going to title it At the Big People Table. The background of the painting will show the ceiling, windows, and rafters of the winery, and there are lots of warm browns and copper colors. Okay, so while I was talking, I've continued to work on her nose and sort of connect it with her eyes and other picky stuff. Now I'm reaching the end of this painting session, and I think her skin in general could use more color. So I'm going over it again with water and dropping in some peachy pinks for her cheeks, along with some other shadowy browns here and there. Then I'll let this dry and come back to it tomorrow. All right, it's tomorrow. And once again, I am all about making the whites of her eyes blue. It's always good to come back to a painting with fresh eyes. I immediately knew I needed to give her eyes even more blue and her eyebrows could use one last layer of brown. You can still see some skin peeking through in places. It would be a mistake to paint them a solid dark brown. This is just nice and soft. Oh, and while I'm at it, let's give her an ear or two. I'm adding some bluish shadows here and there. It's good to have some cool colors in a light skin tone. And then I'm going to get nervy again and do another layer of wet into wet on her skin, first painting selected areas with plain water and dropping in more color. I'm using a paper towel to soften any edges I see and I'm removing that dam of masking fluid around her fingers. Then, just like with her face, I'm wetting down her entire hand and dropping some colors on it and letting them blend together. She has warm and cool colors in her hands, but all of these colors are pretty light until you get to her fingertips, and that's where I'm going to put more intense colors, including orange and pink. I'll let that calm down a bit more while I work on her hair. I've moved my laptop back a bit. Her hair is going to look weird for now. As Belle has grown, her hair has become darker, but at this age and in this light, it's almost golden brown in some places. So I'm trying to establish some of those lighter tones, including some cool bluish highlights. I'll go over these again and again with deeper browns. But now it's back to her hand. I like to skip around like this if I can on a painting, where one part is drying while a new part is wet. I'm adding more of those oranges to her fingers and defining some of the other shadows in her hand. Baby hands are the same as baby faces. You want to keep things as streak-free as you can. Their skin is intimidatingly perfect. Next, I'm removing some of the masking fluid from her hair. These are the lightest areas. I like those little curved pieces by her cheek. It seems like Belle is going to have wavy hair and who knows, maybe even curly hair like mine, which is rare in our family and most definitely a gift and a curse. I've added some dark brown to her hair with a messed up fuzzy brush. The top of her head looks especially fake at this point, but I will soften that and blend it in with the other hair. We are absolutely looking at the awkward stage of this painting. You can see little bits of her mouth between her fingertips and I'm continuing to work on her hands. This video has been sped up 20 times, by the way. And that's about all I'm going to do here. If you'd like to watch this painting continue to evolve, I post regular updates on my website, kellyeddington.com, and on social media, all listed below. Check them out and follow me. I hope you've enjoyed watching the first two days of this painting. And this is what it looks like at the end of the third day. Thanks a lot for watching and please subscribe.